What is going on guys? Welcome to your 16th Java game development tutorial. And in this tutorial we're going to be building that method that compares two different display modes and if they are, or pretty much if they match each other, the resolution, bit depth, and refresh rate all match each other, then it's going to return true. But if they don't match each other, it's going to return false. Again, this is a boolean method. So let's go ahead and we're pretty much building this method to compare the display modes that we have to our display modes that our graphics card has um, right in here. So we built this method and it takes two display modes as a parameter. So let's go ahead and write a little comment. Checks if two modes match each other and that's pretty much is what it's all going to do. Check if two modes match each other. Evidently each other is two words, not one. Just learned that after uh, 22 years of living. So public boolean, since it's going to return true or false, that's what you put boolean for. Display modes match, and as a parameter, of course, we're going to take display mode, we'll just name this one M1, display mode, and we'll just name this one M2. And evidently I didn't hit the right button. There we go. So what we do is we have a method called display modes match and we have two modes we pass it in a first mode and a second mode. So all we have to do is compare them to one another. Simple enough, but it's actually really confusing. We're going to have to make three separate if statements. One for the resolution, one for the bit depth, and one for the refresh rate. So let's go ahead and make our first one. If m1.get and what we need to do is get width. Get width. I say width, width, there we go, is not equal to m2.get width. So if they're not equal, or if m1.get height is not equal to m2.get height. So if either of their height or width, I keep saying, I'm just going to say width from now on. If their height or width <laughs> is not equal, then what do we want to do? Well, since we need a return statement, we're going to want to return false in that case scenario. So now that we got the width under control and height, this is the resolution. Uh, we need to make another check for bit depth. And the bit depth is pretty much how many colors can it display. Um, there's a little more to it, but in essence, that's what it is. So if m1 dot get bit depth right there is not equal to m2 actually before we do that I need to tell you guys something about display mode dot bit depth multi and what this is if we hover over it and it doesn't say it but well this is too confusing it'll just confuse y'all because it's really um, complicated but what we're gonna do is check it against bit depth multi and I'll tell you guys what it means later on but it's gonna take me like a minute and a half and I really don't feel like talking about it we're pretty much gonna be comparing the bit depth of one and two and do something special in this case but for now we'll just skip it so let's go ahead and put and so what do we do for m2 is not equal to that I messed everything up now so if m1 get bit depth and m2 dot get bit depth and we'll say not equal to copy that not equal to display mode bit depth multi uh, let me make sure where am I and one more and m1 dot get bit depth if this if the bit depth if of the first mode is not equal to the bit depth of the second mode then what do we want to do so let me make sure I didn't mess anything up if the bit depth not equal this and the bit depth does not equal that and m1 bit depth is not equal to m2 bit depth what do we want to do return false so maybe I'll tell you what this means later on but here we go 
value of bit depth and multiple bit depths are supported in this display mode. So some display modes have multiple bit depths and it's just really confusing but I mean it's even confusing for me to understand so I just usually just copy this and forget about it. So now what we did is we made a test for the resolution to see if they match and if they don't match we want it to return false. If the bit depths don't match we want this to return false and if the resolution rate or excuse me refresh rate if m1 dot get refresh rate is not equal to display mode dot refresh rate unknown and m2 dot get refresh rate is not equal to Right, yeah. Oh, I know what I did. Display mode dot refresh rate unknown and one more one M1 dot get refresh rate is not equal to M2 dot get refresh rate. See, that is really long, and this is like the worst part of these tutorials, I promise return false so now that we have all those weird tests that we need and you actually need to type it in just like that because pretty much when you work with resolution bit depth and a refresh rate on your computer they have a bunch of weird things that you really only do this once and no one actually really learns them they just copy them from other people and these are pretty much three tests if the pretty much this is all it's saying if the first mode's resolution doesn't match the second mode's resolution, then we want to say false. If the first mode's bit depth doesn't match the second mode's bit depth, return false. If the third, or excuse me, if the first mode's refresh rate doesn't match the second mode's refresh rate, return false. And if you pass all those tests, then it means that all three of these things match. So what we can do is go ahead and return true. And now, in this method right here, find first compatible mode, or excuse me, not that one. Why is this underlined? Oh, I know what I did wrong. Because it's going to do all this for a check, and let me make sure where to put that. Return null. Good thing we have that. So now what this does is display modes match. It's going to take two modes right here, and whenever this, whenever these two modes match, then this whole function is going to be true. So it's going to say, all right, if true, run this bit of code, and it's going to return the mode that's not only compatible with our program, which would be this, but is also compatible with your graphics card right there. So now we are pretty much on our way to building the perfect screen manager. And now this game can run not only on our computer, but anyone's computer that has this game using these two methods find compatible mode and see if they match so now we just got to do a couple more things in this class and then we're ready to run our animation again and watch it with beautiful no flickers at all but for now just pretty much copy this we're never going to be really learning about this anymore but if you want to then uh, go on the java website but just pretty much copy this and uh, you're ready to move on to the next tutorial because we're done with this finally because it pretty much sucks so thank you guys for watching. In the next tutorial, we're going to be building a method to set full screen. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.